pictures of Ian the other day, day before yesterday, but they didn't have bird. And good morning, everyone. This morning, welcome from Lutheran and First United Methodist Conjoined Service. So we're just glad to see all these people here. Also, really, I'm always grateful whenever we have a noisy congregation. It means that brotherhood and fellowship is happening. So that's great. I see some faces also that are visiting. So welcome. In a little bit, I could embarrass you, but I won't. Uh, I'm in charge of welcome and announcements, so you have officially been welcomed, except right now just take a moment, stand up and wave to everybody that's back and say, hey, we're glad you're back. And if there's someone you don't know, make your way to their side and introduce yourself and make them feel welcome, okay? Are there any announcements this morning? Way back in the back, Jill. There's one right here. There's one right there. Good morning. No, it's not. We will resume. Yes. We will resume three octave choir practice this Wednesday. The a subgroup has been working without me when Pat and I have been gone on these nomad trips, but we're going to get the full choir back together. I've talked to several of you and who are interested and. If you've already spoken with me, just please come at 530. If anyone else is interested in ringing with us, please let me know. But we will, we're going to concentrate on the Christmas season with rehearsals Wednesday nights at 530. Thank you. Are there any, uh, did y'all all hear that? Uh, so Bells will resume their three octave practice this Wednesday at 530. And she appreciates all of those who have been doing the sub group mm -hmm. belling 
also. Yeah, we, well, and our bells performed at the uh, Hometown Harvest. That was good to see. We had some singers from the choir. We, it was just a really, really, really great day. And the fact that it kind of happened on my birthday weekend made me think it was all for me. Yeah, I had a birthday that lasted like five days, and that was really cool. Uh, I have an apology to make to our Facebook audience. Uh, we hope that you are tuning in and listening. I made a post this morning about trunk or treat, and it was wrong. It was an error. So let me just tell everyone right now that trunk or treat will happen tonight, 5.30 to 7.30, and uh, the Methodist and Lutheran, our group will be on the south side of the courthouse at 4th and Main, like you're headed east to Jefferson, like at the Hometown Harvest where all the food trucks were, that's where we're going to be. Y'all are really looking at me like, what? Does everybody got it? Okay, so don't pay attention to anything I post on Facebook. It was wrong. Never do. Never do. Anyway, I got that straight from the coordinator, so I know that one's right. Uh, are there any other announcements to be made? I saw a hand. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, we will remember. Let me write his name down, and we're going to remember that because in a little bit, Tracy will lead us in prayers and concerns. Um, I do want to say that uh, Jake Hun's funeral service will be here at the Methodist Church. Bill Coffin is going to be presiding uh, over that service, but the service will be at 1 o'clock. Are there any other announcements? Okay. Let us begin our worship.
Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. Our first hymn this morning is number 64, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We will sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Please stand as we sing. standing for the call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. And the Lord will reign forever, your God, O oh Zion, for generations. Praise the Lord. O Lord, you are our God, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, teach us through your word to follow after you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now that I'm going to start pretty soon and it won't be near as good, so enjoy today.
hope y'all remember that. Okay. Today's scripture reading is from the New Testament, the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 11 through 14. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, but that is to say, not of this creation. And not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood. He entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal <laughs> redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling those who have been defiled, sanctify for the cleansing of flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, to cleanse your conscience from dead works, to serve again the living God. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. <laughs> well, it is wonderful to see everyone here this morning. I was so excited when I saw some faces that I haven't seen for a while, but I am always happy to see everyone. Sunday is my favorite time because I, I love to come into worship. I do. I love to worship and I love uh, being here this morning. And I have no idea where I am. <laughs> Offering, the offertory. Okay. All right. We're here. Yes. As Christ has given himself for us, let us in turn give of ourselves for the sake of others.
gracious God, we ask that you bless the gifts that we have given, that we may spread your love to all of our neighbors and show us how to love as you love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our next hymn is number 389, Freely, Freely. We will sing both verses. Now we come to our time of sharing our joys and concerns, and I know that uh, Jake Hun's family was, has been lifted up. What other joys and concerns do you have? Yes, Noah. You're grateful for the world and what God made. Yes, you know what? I am too. What about all of you? Are we all grateful for God and the world and what he has made? Amen. Amen. Yes, Jack. You have some money? <laughs> oh, good, good. We are grateful for money, too. <laughs> what other joys and concerns do you bring this morning? That's great. Oh. So Bill and Lori are celebrating their anniversary on Tuesday. How many years? Eight, Eight years. Congratulations. Well, 
I am very happy for you. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes, the food pantry uh, is been, has been going well, and uh, we do have uh, some very dedicated volunteers that help out. And uh, many hands make light work for all of us, so that's a, that is a joy. Other joys and concerns? Then let us pray. Let us pray for all the needs of the world, saying, God of mercy, hear our prayer. For the Church of Christ and for people of faith who call upon God by other names, that where there is need and division, your spirit will bring understanding and reconciliation. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For earth, for minerals, bacteria, microbes, and all that lives and breathes in every size and shape, for the healing of all of earth's scars and toxins, for wisdom to deal well and act equitably with every landscape. We are grateful for the world. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For nations, leaders, armies, town councils, peacekeepers and peacemakers, legislators at all levels of government, for voters and for people who work to, toward democracy, for those who fight against change and those who fight for changes in the name of justice. God of mercy, hear our prayer for children and for those who are raising up children in this complicated world, that in the midst of their common struggles there will be times of great joy and happiness. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For all who daily show us how to live well and in accord with your commands, God of mercy, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in our land from hunger, homelessness, poverty, and illness, especially those that we name before you. We pray for the family of Jake Hun, and we pray for Ashley and Marsha, and Martha and Bill and Patricia and Steve and Keeley and the Yant Smith twins, Tony and Deanna. God, in, of your, God of mercy. In thanksgiving for all the blessings that you bestow, we are especially grateful for the world and, and for all that you create. And we are thankful for uh, Bill and Lori celebrating eight years of anniversary and the joy of a food pantry that serves to show our love to those in need. God of mercy. We are thankful for those who have taught us faith. We ask you to hear our pleas and our words of gratefulness. Keep us in your care and bring us to the feast that has no end. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Sunday school is collecting change to buy donuts to pay it forward. While he's doing that, I just want to tell you that I am so thankful for Phil and Tom to be up there doing this for us.
You had to go there. You just had to go there. We are all in the family of God. So our gospel reading this morning comes to us from Mark 12, 28 to 34. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. And he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. The word of God for the people of God. All right, kids. Oh, there it is. I was like, where's my stool? I have to have my stool. All right. Come on. Come on. Good job, Lane. <laughs> okay, so you know what I'm going to do? Since you guys are facing that way, I'm going to face this way. So there, I can see you now. Now you're going to be the center of attention. So, have you guys ever played games, of board games like this? Yeah, this one's called Scattergories Junior. Have you guys ever played this game? No? You know what? I haven't either. So in order to play a game like this, we have to know, because there's lots of stuff in here. I, I, what are you supposed to do with this? Oh, and, the, okay. And, oh, there's more of these. And, oh, no. <gasps> There's something very important missing from this. What do you suppose it is? No, um, I think that these are considered the board, I, I guess. A what? A, no, there's pencils in here. Um, oh, oh, it's the instructions. The rules! How are we going to play the game if we don't have the rules to teach us how to play, right? That's what games have. Games have all of this stuff in them, but they also have rules that help us learn how to play these games. And you know, we have rules for life. And you know where we can find those rules for life? Yes, Jack, tell me. I bet you know Noah. Do you know? Where? Oh, the, not running in the house, okay. Okay, so rules to live by, don't run in the house. But what about adults too? Where can we find all the rules to, for our whole entire life? Lane? The Bible! Yes! Woohoo! Yes, the Bible has all the rules for us to live by so that we can live the best life possible. And you know what? The Bible has two commandments. And Jesus was telling them, the people today in the story, what those two greatest rules are. Love God with everything that you are, and love your neighbor as yourself. 
Those are the two greatest commandments. And if we live with love in our hearts for God and for other people, then we, everything else will fall into place. And so we want to make sure that we are always filled with love, love of God and love of neighbor. And we do that by coming to church and worshiping God. That's, oh, you have a question? Okay. Yeah, no hitting walls. That's a good rule, too. Yes. So our, there's no yelling in the house. Yes. Well, let's get back to God's rules. God's rule is to love God and to love our neighbors and obey God. Well, you know, when we come to church and we sing songs, those songs are singing to God, showing him how much we love him. And when we love our neighbor, we do nice things for them. So we do nice things even if they're not very nice to us. That can be hard sometimes, but we always want to make sure that we do the good thing, even if others don't. Okay, so love God and love your neighbor. Your what? Your daddy plays games? Yeah, I bet. Okay, all right, let's pray. Holy God, thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ. And thank you for showing us how to love others by your incredible love for us. Help us to love as you love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, thanks. it's karaoke but you don't expect me to sing it okay someday we will all awake and look back go ahead and just to find what we've lost we need to get back to the basics of life a heart that is pure and a love that is blind. A faith that is fervently grounded in Christ. The hope that endures for all time. These are the basics. We need to get back to the basics of life. Oh, ho, 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 oh, ho. All right, so that's what I wanted to, uh, that's the portion of it I wanted you to hear um, about getting back to the basics of life with a pure heart and a, our faith grounded in Christ and a love that is blind. So as we're coming out of this pandemic paralysis, it would be uh, good for us to get back to the basics like this song has said. This is a wonderful way to get started, coming back to church and back to worship. Welcome, everyone, to this very special, special Sunday. And I don't know about you, but I am, I love worship. When I'm not in worship, it just, it ruins my week. And I really miss it. So I'm glad that we're all back and we're together. And what better way to start back to the basics than grounding our faith in Jesus Christ. And that means remembering who Christ is to us. And the Hebrew scripture actually helps us, reminds us of what Christ has done for us. It says, he entered the holy of holies once for all by his own blood, not by the blood of goats or calves, but securing our deliverance for all time. 
If the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkled ashes of cows made spiritually contaminated people holy and clean, how much more will the blood of Jesus wash our consciences clean and from dead works in order to serve the living God? He offered himself to God through the eternal spirit as a sacrifice without any flaw. Jesus came, the sacrificial lamb, to take away all of our sins and offer us grace. That's what our faith is grounded in. Our belief that Jesus Christ died and was resurrected on the third day for each of us. All of us. Every one of us. And if we don't believe that, then we're not really followers of Jesus. And our faith is dead. Now Jesus taught his disciples many things, and we have all of these lessons in our Bible to help us learn the same lessons. And I think the most important lesson Jesus taught was the one that we read today that is in our gospel scripture. Now Jesus is overheard by a scribe who kind of seems to think that Jesus is doing okay answering all of these trick questions that are coming at him. So he decides that I think he just wants to have a conversation with Jesus. So to do that, he decides to ask Jesus a question. He wants to see where Jesus is on the theological scale. So this scribe is actually a theologian. A theologian is someone who studies the nature of God. And the scribe's question about the greatest commandment would have been really simple for Jesus to answer. It would have been like asking one of us, so what's the Pledge of Allegiance? So it really wasn't a question that the scribe was trying to use to trick Jesus like so many of the other leaders of Jesus' time. This question would have been easily known by faithful Jews. And so it wasn't a test. The scribe just wanted to have a conversation with Jesus. Jesus answers the question by reciting Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. Only Jesus adds to the commandment. See, Deuteronomy reads, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might, which is strength. And Jesus adds mind. He adds mind to how God is to be loved. To love God with our hearts and our souls and our minds and our strength means our entire being. Because those are the things that are that make us up. Those are the, the parts of us that are most important. And Jesus also recites the second commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then he claims there is no other commandment greater than these. And to this, the scribe agrees. Now I can see the scribe thinking in his head, oh, whew. So we agree on one thing, at least. Jesus' answer that the scribe is, agrees with tells us that the basic commandment of God is to love God with everything that we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And Jesus reinforces that by saying, there is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe agrees by saying, this is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. That's a big deal. I mean, that's what they were using to cleanse themselves from sin, were these burnt offerings. So this is important. Love is a good foundation for us to build our faith on. I've always said, if you love God and you love your neighbor, everything else will fall into place. Love is greater and much more important than anything else. When we love God with our whole being, it's a deep and full love, and it infuses our lives. It means that everything in our lives is 
highlighted by that love. And God loves us even better than we can even imagine loving. God loves us even if we don't love him back. God loves perfectly. He loves all people without reserve, without exclusion, no matter what they've done, where they've come from. God loves them, and he loves all of you. Now that's the bar that is set for our love of our neighbors. That's kind of scary. Because if we're to love our neighbors the way God loves us, even if they don't love us back, even if they don't really even like us, that's scary. That can be hard. But it's called agape love. It's a love that is unconditional. It means a love that is given equally to all people. A love that hopes for the best for the other person. And if we seriously think about this, it seems impossible. It does. It seems impossible. Maybe. Maybe on our own, it's impossible for us as humans. But it's not impossible for God. We can't ever forget that God is how we do a lot of the stuff we do. It's only through God's grace and love that we are able to love others in a perfect way. Our basic foundation of faith is our belief in a risen Christ and our love of God and neighbor. Now, this is what gives us the hope that we can make it through this life on earth, which can seem horrible at times, and make it to the other side where he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death will be no more. And mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. And it's a common faith. It's a common belief. It's a common hope that we all share, that we share with all Christians. Now this exchange between Jesus and the scribe reinforces the unity of our faith. Even though Jesus and the scribe were different in their approach and understanding of God, they could agree on the basics. Their exchange shows a unity of understanding that we don't often see with Jesus and the other leaders. I mean, you think about it. Think about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Herodians and, and everybody trying to trick him into saying something that will cause others to hate him. Highlighting the differences in their beliefs and what Jesus is teaching. They were very different than Jesus and this scribe. Their unity gives us hope that we even as diverse as Christians are, we can be unified in our common God. And we can love God and love each other. It doesn't matter what church we go to or what denomination we're a part of. We're all in the family of God. And God loves us equally. After all, we claim a universal faith every time we recite the Apostles' Creed. So I'd like to ask you to join with me in reciting the Apostles' Creed, if you could just stand and turn in your hymnals to 882. Some of you may know it by heart. I know I had to learn it by heart uh, during my confirmation. Number 882. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. To return to the basics where we have a pure heart and a blind love. That means a love that doesn't see anything but love. And faith grounded in Christ, we return to worship. We pray for each other. And we study our scriptures and we fellowship with each other. And we love each other. After this worship service, we have a fellowship dinner where we can all get together and we can swap stories and, and just have a great time talking and getting to know each other a little bit better. I know you all know each other probably better than I know any of you, but that's okay. I'm learning. So the most important thing to God is our love of God and love of neighbor. And God's love is also demonstrated in his giving of his son, Jesus Christ, for our sake. Jesus gave his life for ours so that we have the hope of salvation. He also gave us a new covenant. And that we celebrate that during Holy Communion, where we remember Jesus' last meal with his disciples and Jesus' sacrifice. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. I pray we show our devotion by remembering Christ's love in Holy Communion. So let us prepare our hearts for this precious gift. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, 
Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The table is prepared, all is ready. Everyone is welcome at Christ's table. You are welcome at Christ's table. Those who are coming to assist, would you come forward?
please join with me in the prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is number 545, The Church is One Foundation. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Please stand as we sing. Jesus gave us the greatest of commandments. Go loving God with all of your being and love one another and the world. May the love of God and may the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Oh, before we go, let's say grace. Gracious and loving God, we are so thankful for the food that we are about to partake. Bless our fellowship together and bless the food that we may continue to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. See you downstairs. <laughs>